love my Bible. The Bible is the best. We're going to protect Christianity, and I can say that. I don't have to be politically correct. The evangelicals are with me because they know one thing about me. I'm not a liar. I win with the evangelicals by a lot. They know I'm legit. I wrote the art of the deal. I always say a deep, deep second to the Bible. The Bible is the best. The Bible. They're some of the country's most powerful people, and now they have been gathering at the White House for God making history as part of president's, the president's cabinet Bible study. So what's behind the spiritual awakening at the White House? Here to weigh in on this is chief political correspondent for the Christian Broadcasting Network and host of Faith Nation, David Brody. Hey, David, good to see you. Hey, Angel, good to see you. Thank you. Well, so tell us what's happening at the White House. They're having a Bible study every week. Every week at the HHS building, uh, cabinet members, 12 of them, which is the majority of the cabinet, is attending. These are evangelicals, Christians, uh, Mike Pompeo, the CIA, you've got Ben Carson, uh, Rick Perry, Tom Price. The list goes on, and, you know, Mike Pence is uh, planning to drop by. The invitation is open for the president as well, So, uh, but he's getting the notes from the Bible study. So it's pretty fascinating. Our, our White House correspondent, Jennifer Wishon, broke the story. P pretty, pretty fascinating. Most, is this the most evangelical presidency you've seen? Oh, 100%. I don't think there's any More question so about it. More so than George Bush, 43? Yes, uh, and, if, and, and I, I, there are no qualms about that. Now, I know there might be some pushback for, from some evangelical leaders uh, in that George W. Bush era, but, but if you talk to evangelicals private, privately, the dirty little secret is they're getting more access uh, and FaceTime with this president uh, than George W. Bush, the evangelical president. There, there's not even a question about it. It's kind of like a, kind of like a factory in, in the sense that all of these folks just kind of keep coming in and out. Of, it's like a shuttle mm -hmm. bus going into the White House from evangelicals. And it's interesting because I actually emailed an evangelical leader the other day, and I said, hey, there are a couple evangelical leaders at the White House today. What's going on there? You know, try, try to get it as a source. And the guy says to me, there's always evangelical leaders here every single day, and that really is the case. Compare this White House when it comes to Bible study and uh, the evangelical movement to the last mm -hmm. administration. Well, I mean, look, there were Bible studies up, up on Capitol Hill, and there's, and there's still Bible studies, of Democrats and Republicans together. And, you know, I know the president, President Obama, took his faith very seriously, and I know he got some pushback in evangelical circles. So there was some of that. But, but this is much different because this is a president, President Trump, who encourages the evangelicals and the Bible studies and the cabinet meetings. And it's interesting, uh, if you talk to evangelical leaders, when they're around this president, uh, this president, they say this president has a lot of peace, that he wants to to be around evangelicals, that he's at, at ease with them. It's, it's a very uh, interesting dynamic. Well, I know many of us need faith that makes us better people, and that's exactly what I've gotten and my friends have gotten from Bible study, so I think this is a great thing. Thank you so much, David, for being with us. You bet, Ainsley. American atheists are up in arms after the White House revealed it hosts a weekly Bible study with high-ranking cabinet members, some even claiming that the Bible study is an illegal use of taxpayer funds. So is this okay, or is religion not welcome at the White House? Here to debate it, Andrew Seidel is a constitutional attorney from the Freedom From Religion Foundation, and Dr. Jay Strack is the president and founder of Student Leadership University and Faith Leaders on, and he's a part, one of the faith leaders on the White House faith-based initiative team. Uh, Andrew and Jay, thank you very much for joining us this morning. Andrew, I will start with you. The name of your foundation is Freedom From Religion. However, when you read the First Amendment, it talks about freedom of religion. Why would these leaders not have the ability in a country with a lot of faith-filled people to simply host a Bible study? Well, look, there, there are two major concerns here, right? There's the legality and the propriety of this. So first, these are government officials on government property using government resources on the taxpayer time getting together for a religious purpose. And that raises several issues. You know, what is the extent of the government resources being used? Are staffers pressured or coerced into attending? And you the Freedom do you from believe Religion that Foundation these cabinet members are submitted being... a number of... Do you believe they're being coerced? No, I'm saying that I this mean, is something we don't. I'm saying that this is something we don't know, and we've actually submitted records requests to attempt to determine the extent of any possible violations. But if you leave the, the legalities aside, the propriety here, I mean, it can't be considered proper or in keeping with American values for government officials to get together on taxpayer time to study a book that condones slavery and the subjugation of women and the eternal torture and torment of people who don't believe like you. So well, even if it doesn't violate the Constitution directly, it certainly violates that core principle of American government, the so, separation of state and Dr. church. Dr. Strack, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm just going to let you open up and respond to that. Yes, well, thank you. Well, I'm, I'm upset that Andrew is dismayed and <laughs> appalled and distraught that a group of men and women in the White House 
who are faced with some of the challenges that our world is facing, the planet is on fire, will take a little bit of time to get to know each other, to pray for one another, and then also to pray for wisdom and to see a, you know, a verse or two in Scripture about how to be focused in life. So uh, I'm very grateful we have a president. I'm very grateful for a cabinet that gives people an opportunity to do so. And if you were to take away, in fact, I'm afraid Andrew and some of his uh, friends would be very upset to have been at that constitutional convention in <laughs> Philadelphia when their, I guess their hero, Benjamin Franklin, stood and said simply, Sir, I've lived a long time. We have seen, after praying daily in this building for divine protection well, during the well, great struggle correct, against now, Great Britain. They didn't no, actually pray is, daily in the building at all. They well, prayed, they prayed daily Franklin during Franklin sessions of said. Congress. I, lost I mean, they prayed. They prayed. That's what they said. Can you hear us, Andrew? Andrew, that's what, that, that's what Benjamin know. Franklin said. That's his own words. Well, I mean, Benjamin Franklin proposed a prayer, but they did not have any prayer at the Constitutional Convention, and the delegates actually rejected his call to do prayer. Do they have prayer in there Congress today? There was no prayer at the Constitutional Convention. Do they not pray in no open prayer sessions? At the do convention. they not open well, sessions of Congress today with a prayer? Well, and the Freedom from Religion Foundation is actually suing because they've rejected atheists' attempt to get an invocation done. But James Madison, who okay, wrote so the Bill do. of Rights and is the father of the Constitution, said that those chaplains in Congress are a direct violation of equal rights and of the First Amendment. So the and again, you know, we don't actually have... Is this, you're invoking what, what many invoke is a wall of separation between church and state. Yes. Except there is no, the wall of separation of church and state is not in the Constitution, is it? It was in a letter drafted in 1803. So your yeah, entire course, premise exactly. I mean, nobody. Is, no, I mean, absolutely not. That, that is a phrase that is used to sum up the sum relationship up. between religion and government. And it has been adopted by the Supreme Court as early as 1878. I mean, fair trial isn't a phrase that appears in the Constitution, but everybody recognizes well, that there's a right is. to a fair Doctor, trial. Doctor, Doctor, difference between freedom yeah. from religion and freedom of religion. There's no question. I don't know how it can traumatize somebody that people of their own <laughs> free will have chosen. They have the freedom to say, I, have a pr I am a man of faith, a woman of faith, I need prayer, and I would like to do this. And I'm very grateful that we have an administration that says part of what made America America is our faith. And, I, you know, Andrew is right. Nobody should have anything imposed upon them. And no one at those weekly Bible studies and those of us that have the privilege to work with uh, the president several times and his cabinet can honestly tell you it's a sincere listening yep. session. And, you know, the picture well, that everybody went wait. crazy over us praying over the president, well, if you knew what was happening before that prayer and after that prayer on prison reform yep. and social justice, and then after the prayer, we went right back to doing our best no, efforts. No, so. no doubt consequential stuff for sure. I know I, how I feel about this. You guys are going to continue to debate it. We want to ask our viewers, let us know, friends at foxnews.com, where do you stand with the nation at 7% 7, 7 atheists? I feel like it might be a bit one-sided with the emails, but we'll see. Thank you both for joining us. Really, really appreciate it. Let me start with this, Mark. There were black churches all across America right. that were playing for President Obama when he came into office. Right. I, I, I don't get it. I, who, who thinks that it's not a good idea for... Our money says in God we trust. Like, yeah. why wouldn't we pray for our leader? Well, because I think on the left particularly, uh, there are uh, secular... Uh, uh, there's a secular elite that doesn't like... It, it's actually creeped out by ostentatious displays of faith. So uh, like a little kind of rump residual Episcopalianism is like okay, but when you've actually got laying on a hands, that's whoa, that's way too much, man. And, and I love that southern term coming out of your British mouth. <laughs> <laughs> that's even better. But that's, but that's, actually, what it, that's actually what it is uh, here. They, they, they find that strange. It's not strange to millions of people. And Trump has an odd way of talking. When he, when he addresses his religious meetings and he goes, I love evangelicals, they're fabulous. Did you hear the one about two Corinthians walking into a bar or whatever? It's not a normal way. He didn't it's, really not a, that. it's not That's a normal a joke, way though. to talk to evangelicals in a certain sense. But they respond to his sincerity and they understand that the real opposition to them is people like Erin Burnett who just find them creepy and weird okay. and they don't like it, but, them. But it's really interesting because she should employ a little bit of curiosity. Right. And, and maybe this is a facet of someone's life that is most important to them and something that's actually very sacred. And it, using pejorative words like strange is sort of off-putting. So if this is a, a block of voters that's so threatening to Democrats, uh, 
my suggestion would be maybe don't criticize them openly if you're interested in bringing them to your side. No. So and they yeah. wouldn't do it. They wouldn't do it with Muslims if it was some yeah. uh, Any other faith. Muslim rich. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless America.